Well, hey guys, I wanted to give you a um, a brief overview of how to handle the uh, paragraphs on the ACT so that um, you can begin to save a little time and know what to read versus what to ignore. So let's get on with it. Okay, in the upper left-hand corner, you see uh, the first uh, clip that I have here. And uh, notice that you see italicized word, total solar irradiance. Any italicized word that you see in any paragraph, no matter where it's at on the exam, you must read it. You must read it. The way the italicized words are distributed through a paragraph is very important. You'll see in some paragraphs, there are multiple italicized words distributed throughout that paragraph. And when you see those, that tells you to read that entire paragraph. But let me get on with each example that I have here to help you out. So in the upper left-hand corner again, we see a total solar irradiance. You've got to read it to know what it means. It is the rate at which energy from solar radiation is received by Earth per unit area of the surface. So therefore, the surface of the Earth receives some irradiance from some amount of irradiance per unit area of Earth. Okay, now what else is important to read in these paragraphs? Anything that you see abbreviated or anything that's abbreviated and italicized with subscripts. In the rest of this paragraph, notice you see C, N, and AL. Well, what does C stand for? Carbon, nitrogen, and aluminum. Now, if you already know what those elements are, there's no sense you reading the rest of that paragraph. There just isn't. If you want to, go ahead and play around with it so you can see for yourself if they were really worth wasting the time to read about carbon, nitrogen, and aluminum. Now, this paragraph was paired up with a very large graph that is going to be discussed on a different video, but not this one, because this is just about how to decide which paragraphs to read, which ones to ignore, what to read within the paragraph, and what to ignore so you can move on and save time. Okay, the next paragraph directly below that one, where it says seven four-gram mixtures of glycerol, well, when you scan that paragraph, you don't see any italicized words. Do you see any other abbreviations besides temperature of 25 degrees C? No. Now, this paragraph is originally paired up with a figure. And that figure I discuss in another video. But at this point in this paragraph, no italicized words, no abbreviations. Leave it, go straight to the figure and interpret the figure because the figure is going to help you understand the entire experiment without reading anything. And that's discussed in another video. Okay. The bottom left paragraph. Notice how the italicized words are distributed. Paramecia, P. caudatum, P. aurelia. And then it goes on through to about the last sentence where it says population density. <clears throat> the distribution of these italicized words is a key sign for you to read the paragraph. In that paragraph, there's going to be a lot of key information. So let me just go over that one. I'm going to discuss this paragraph 
uh, in uh, another video for the hypothesis videos. But I just want to show you why it's important right now. Students grew two different species of paramecia called datum and aurelia together for 18 days in a test tube containing growth medium. Constant supply of bacteria was maintained in the growth medium. The figure shows how the population density of each species changed over 18 days. Now, there's a lot of information in this little paragraph, and look why it's so important. They tell us that you have two paramecium in a test tube together. They tell you in the parentheses, uh, the bacteria is a food source for the paramecium. So there's bacteria in the, in the test tube with the two paramecium. And it is the food source for the paramecium. But it also tells you that a constant supply of bacteria was maintained in a growth medium. So the growth medium is in a test tube with, with them. The growth medium is used by the bacteria to get nutrients from. The last tenant gives you, in the last parentheses, says number of paramecium per milliliter. Well, that's implying volume. What's making up the volume? It's some solution. Where, do, where are paramecia normally found? In water. So now you know what the solution is. It's water. So in the test tube, you have water, two paramecia, bacteria, and you have um, growth medium. Do you see why the distribution of those italicized words were really important and why you should read that whole paragraph? Okay, let's move on. The upper right-hand corner. What I want to emphasize here, even though there's uh, the word isoelectric point italicized, there's also a normal word, the word does, that's been italicized. When you see a normal word italicized, please read the paragraph. Something's really important about, about that paragraph. So please read it. Okay, the next paragraph. <clears throat> Not only do we need to look for italicized words, but we need to look for uh, abbreviations with subscripts that have been italicized. For instance, K, which is a measure of the spring's stiffness. Then we go and we see M sub B, which is the, the mass of the blog. Then we scan through it and we see M sub P, mass of the projectile. We continue scanning and we see V, which indicates velocity. And then lastly, we see X in the second to the last sentence, indicating distance. Now notice how those italicized abbreviations are spread through the paragraph. They want you to read it. So read a paragraph when you see it like that. And then another way that you'll see um, italicized words is maybe just one sentence. And when you just see it one sentence, read the sentence and then uh, move on. Okay. Now, I've given you six examples of how they use italicized words, but how you can use the italicized words to make decisions on whether to read information or leave it behind, how to use abbreviations to read the information or leave it behind. I don't want you wasting time when you don't need to waste time. I hope this helps, and if you ever need any help, or you got some questions, just reach out to me. Wish you all the best.